Today's video is going to be on this. This Monkey Ward dual stage power reverse five horsepower snow trawler. 24 inch path it cleared. And I checked the code date on it. And the code date is from 1979, so figure this was probably a 1980 model. So check it out. We're going to get this thing running and working, and then I'm going to do an upgrade on it. And I'm going to show you what kind of upgrade I'm going to do. But the first thing we need to do is get it running, because it hasn't ran in a while. So let's check it out. First thing I'm going to do... Let's make sure we got some dinosaur syrup in there before we go starting on it. Get my little light out. And let's see. Yeah, there's some in there. It's a little low, but there's enough in there to run it. We'll have to top that off. And then next, we're going to take a peek inside the gas tank. And there's gas in there, and the tank's not all rusty. The gas, I don't know, it looks old. So this being from 79 means that it still has points and condenser. It don't have electronic ignition. And it also has this original sticker on here, this little decal or whatever it was dirty but it tells you how to operate it plus it tells you how to operate it here too so let's see if it'll start we gotta turn the key on here and pull this up for fast and then the choke is over here. Check this out. This is the choke knob. And that works. See it working over here? So everything appears to work. It's in nice condition for as old as it is. That's how you go forward. Reverse. This is how you engage the snow thrower part. It does have safeties on it. I notice there's a safety switch in here. See that little switch? Little micro switch. And there's another micro switch here. So when you're operating this, you have to have this lever up. Now most of the time when I see these, somebody would usually take electrical tape and tape this up. So it would be on all the time to defeat the safeties. So the way this works is, if you've got it in gear and you've got the auger running and you let go of this handle, it's going to kill it. Alright, so we got it on. I doubt if it's going to start. So let's give it a shot of some dinosaur farts and see what happens. That'll tell us if we got spark. Oh, and another thing, look. It's got the original spark plug in it because you can still see the orange paint on there.
but it won't idle. Let's see if it'll start up again. Okay, so the kill switch doesn't work, but everything else works, and I'm surprised it did run. So I had gotten this from a Tarot fan. Another Tarot fan had given us this, and he said, you know, maybe you can get it running. It hasn't ran in a while, but it ran. Just needed a little help, so I'm sure if I pour some fresh fuel in, it'll run. But I noticed a couple other things that are wrong with it. One of them being the tires. Look at them tires. They're hard tires. And they're all wore out. And it looks like they had put some kind of sheet metal screws or something in the tire to get more gription. And they wore them down. So what I want to do is upgrade them to some modern air tires. Now the problem is, these have got some real small axle shafts. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of the wheels off. You pull this quick pin here. And then I'll spin it around and we'll take the pin out. Luckily they're not rusted to the shaft. So this has got 5 8 shafts. So most new snow blowers today have like three-quarter shafts on them. And it's not like I could cut these tires off of here and put some air tires on these rims. So I need to get a set of new tires and rims. So I got a hold of my brother Farrell over at his shop because they do way more snowblowers than we do. Because he'll call me and say, hey, uh, how many snow blowers you take in today? Because his shop is located in the suburb of a big city. So I go, I haven't taken in any. And he just starts laughing. I go, why, how many did you take in? He goes, well, we took 45 in today. Sometimes he'll have as many as 200 in his shop. Especially in the late fall, early winter, when people are getting ready, he'll usually take in, in, in a couple of weeks, like 200 snow blowers. So, he does quite a bit. So anyway, I, I said, hey, I need some, some uh, tires and rims for a snowblower that preferably would have the, that would be pinned down with the, with the hole in it. So he said, what size? And I said, probably 410, 350 by four, like off an errands or something. He goes, I got a junk errands snow trawler here that's got some tires and wheels on it, air tires. So this is what he gave me. So I think I can make these work. Again, these are three quarter, but they do have the hole in it. So let's go over here and check them out. The pin fits. I think on the errands they use the bolt, not a pin. So the pin fits. And they're the right diameter by being at 410. So I just need to bush them down. I need to go from 3 quarter to 5 eighths. So I went in my catalog, plus they're the right height. Here's the old tires. They're pretty close to the size. Now these probably would have been exactly the size had this chevron pattern not been all wore down. If 
figure that was probably sticking up about a half an inch. So these will work. They're about the correct diameter. So I went looking through my catalogs, my Stens Rotary Oregon catalogs, to try to find some bushings. And lo and behold, I found these bronze bushings from Rotary. And they were MTD flange bearings. I don't know what they were for, what, what they were used for on what machine. But there's the MTD part, which is no longer available. And then there's the rotary number, 3209. You don't go with the 09, you just do the 3209. And they had plenty of them in stock. So I did a little research because they're five inch ID, three quarter OD, and they're an inch long, which will be perfect for what we're doing with the flange on there. And they fit in there perfect. See, look at that. The only thing I need to do is drill that hole in there. And the other side, I just gotta, just gotta pop it in there. I pop off this little protective cap. So prime line, I don't know if you know about prime line parts. They sell them at a lot of auto parts stores. There's the prime line part number. I don't know if they still have them available. And I guess Toro has got a bushing that's 5 eighths by 3 quarter. And there's that part number, 2119-127. And Oregon had them too. But when I checked... My Oregon supplier, it said they had three or four of them left, and once they sold those, that was it. Once that uh, stock was depleted, they weren't going to stock them anymore. But maybe you can find some new old stock, 45-091. But there's the, the MTD number, 748 or 948-0855. They had it listed under bulb. I don't know why they changed that first digit all the time, but... In case you're interested, or you can maybe go to a, a bearing supply house. But I don't like this tread pattern. It's not aggressive enough. This is like mini bike tire. This is almost like uh, the tread pattern that was on that other snowblower video we did where I spent way too much money fixing it up. So I'm going to have to find some snowblower tires because otherwise you got to put chains on here got to buy little tire chains and I would rather just have an aggressive snowblower treaded tire to go with but the first thing we need to do is find us some some tires some more aggressive tires so another thing I noticed is this skid shoe is all worn down on this side this one's okay still but this one's all wore down. Now I could probably go in my catalogs and find a skid shoe that'll work. But a lot of times, if you're working on some of this older equipment and the parts aren't available, I know they make a universal skid shoe that's got like a, a insert that goes in there that's on uh, eccentric. So as you turn the little inserts, you know, it changes the center of the skid shoe to match the centers that you may have on yours. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that skid shoe off because I've done this many times for other people. I'm going to take this worn out skid shoe off and I'm going to weld a piece of flat stock on there. I'll bend the ends so it matches that and you could do that too if you're going through a lot of skid shoes you can get some flat stock we'll show you how to do it and uh, you can thicken it up you can even put thicker metal on there so that way it'll take longer to wear through and another thing you can do is a lot of times now all these newer snow blowers have plastic skid shoes on there because people don't want them, the, the metal skid shoes scraping and scratching up their driveway, so now they put these plastic ones on there. So that's another option. Uh, 
you could uh, add some hard plastic to the bottom of that if you have some available. But we're gonna we're gonna fix that skid shoe. All right, so I want to figure out why this kill switch isn't working. So if you notice, it's only got one terminal going to it. And then over here, this looks like it grounds to the chassis of the snowblower to kill it. So I got my continuity light, and I'm going to test the switch to see if it works. So that's in the off position, and it's lighting up. So when I turn it on, the light should go off, and it does. So. Chances are this thing is rusted and it's not making a good ground. So all I have to do is undo that nut. And we'll check and see if it's just rusty and we just gotta clean it. To get it to shut off because this thing is all original and like I said it's in good condition now this wasn't made by monkey wards again monkey wards and Sears they're just stores they would outsource and have their lawn equipment made by somebody else this snowblower was made by Gilson this is a Gilson snowblower. And you know how I know that? Is because when we go to look at the model number tag on here, it starts with GIL, which is short for Gilson. All right. So, I wonder if it grounds to the chassis through this little stud here, or these little rivets. So where's my continuity light again? I'll hook it to here, and yeah. Lighten up my light. So I probably just got to clean this rusty one with some sandpaper. And then it'll probably start shutting off. And if you notice, under here, this hasn't been painted from the factory. They want it to ground. Another thing you could do is you could solder a wire from here and attach it to here so that would ground. Or you could just run a separate ground wire, solder it to here, and just put an eyelid on it. But we're just gonna get down to some bare metal there. Let's hook it back up. try it see if we can fix that first my cross red in that thing all right let's see if that on off switch works now
to make a better brown. Uh oh, money's here. Oh, no, it ain't money. Looks like Slippers is here. Wonder what he wants. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, Slippers? How you doing? Good. What's up? I was cleaning out my garage. I found these old tires in there. I don't need them. I'm oh yeah? Up. What size are they? Uh, four ten fours. Really? I don't know if you need them for something. Why? What do you want for them? Uh, I was just gonna throw them out. Oh. But if you oh. want to give me some money for them. Well, I really got no use for them. But if you're just gonna throw them away, I'll just take them. All right. But I don't know what I would use them for. Okay. But I'll I'll just take them. Thanks. Thanks, slippers. Yeah. No problem. What are buddies for, right? Yeah. <laughs> What are you working on? This old snowblower. Okay. I'm having trouble with the on and off switch. It won't shut off. It's got a bad ground. Oh, that sucks. So I'm trying to fix it. Yeah. Well, those tires are, I think they're for a snowblower. Yeah, well, I don't know. We don't really replace too many snowblower tires. Yeah, that's got those like weird tires. Huh? Yeah, those hard rubber ones. Yeah, so those so, probably won't work for that. No, they won't work for that at all. Okay. Well. I uh, was just cleaning out my garage, figured I'd stop in. All right, well, thanks. Yeah, no problem. All right, thanks, Slippers. All right, catch you later, buddy. All right, see ya. These are the exact same tires I need for that. But I didn't want to tell him that. Bye, sucker, I mean Slippers. Okay, so these little rivets aren't making any contact. They're not making good contact to underneath here. So, these are ignition switch star washers that go on a lot of small engine uh, ignition switches. So I'm going to take these two tabs here and I'm going to bend them down. So they make good contact to that. And then we'll stick this back on there, tighten it down, and then it should shut off. Because I was taking a jumper wire, you notice I was running that little jumper wire and it was starting to kill the motor, but I wasn't getting a good enough ground. So I think if I bend two of these tabs down, That'll make good contact. Then I won't have to, uh, what I do with the, now I lost the nut. I won't have to run a, a separate jumper wire. See if it works. Got the switch on. There, we fixed it. All right, so now let's put the new tires on. So, luckily, both of these tires have got inner tubes in them already. They still got air in them and they got tubes in them because these things are flattened out. So I could probably get them to seat on there. I'd have to use my air tank, but uh, with the inner tubes, that'll help a lot. So these are Oregon branded tires. And there's the size, 410 by 4. And there's the Oregon number. I'm sure uh, Stens and, and Rotary's got these. So maybe you have an older Aaron's snow, snow trower that's got these sawtooth, I guess they call them, tread pattern on there. And maybe you don't want to use the tire chains. You could swap them out for these because these are 410 by 4 also. 410, 350 by 4, but these will work. These are 410 by 4. 
So let's take the air out of them and uh, put them on my tire machine and get them apart. Let's get those little decorative caps out of there. I'll save these caps for something else. And then we'll uh, put our new bushings in there. This one's fitting a little tighter on this side, which is good. And then uh, I'll have to drill the holes in there so we can get the pin in there once I get that other bushing in. I ain't gonna let the air out and lose the valve stem. All right, they come right off the bead. So I'll stick them on my tire machine. These little ones are hard to do. Got some soapy water. Act as a lubricant. So you want to push it down, you want to push the tire down far enough so that you get this edge of the tire to go in this small part of the rim. Because that way it'll give you enough room to get it off. If you're trying to bust it off when it's up here, that's going to make it more difficult. So you want to get it down there and you can get it up. And there's your dinner. Now we gotta get that tube out of there. That's why these, there's not a lot of room to get your fingers in there. You gotta get your fingers in there and kinda draw it out. Well, these tires are still good, so I'm not going to throw them away. And we'll take the screwdriver again. one's off. Now this rim's a little dinged up. But somebody probably did that when they put the tubes in these tires. They probably had a hard time so they bent it up. So I'm going to take a hammer and a punch and just kind of straighten it out. I mean it's not going to not going to hurt anything if you don't do that, but I just want to make it look better. So I'll go around and straighten it up. direction or they're non-directional some other snow blower tires are directional but these aren't so I'm gonna put some more soapy water on there and we're gonna put one side on first I said these are kind of stiff Now, if you're doing this on the floor, you know, you're going to have problems. I 
That's why it's nice to have a tire machine. Because it'll hold it for you. Started and then just inch by inch started on there because this thing is so flat it wants to mount the whole thing on there I tried warming them up but that didn't that didn't help any there we go there now it's on there But there's such a small diameter, it makes it difficult. I'm going to get as much of the air out of this as I can. We put a new valve core in it. I got hundreds of these. Oh. Squeezed it and then air knocked it out. So now that way I'm working with the an inner tube with no air in it. I got stuck this in there. Not easy. Now I get that valve stem close to the hole in there. I think I got a pair of needle nose pliers on this welding cart. Yeah. I need some pliers to help me. I don't want to puncture the tube either. Let me let me get the rest of the tube around the rim. There we go. Now with these needle nose. Gotta get it. And hopefully I'm not puncturing a hole in it by doing this. I said these aren't easy to put on. There we go. Alright. Some more soapy water. I'm going to start over here by the valve stump, working this on. Now I know what you're saying, you should get a pair of those tire spoons instead of a screwdriver. Like these. These work fine on tubeless tires. We use these on tires with inner tubes in it and we always end up punching a hole in the inner tube. No matter how careful we are. So then I end up going back to the screwdriver. But if, if it was a tubeless tire and I had to do it, then I use those spoons because those spoons work good for that. But it seems like we always punch a hole in that tube using, using them spoons. So the trick is just to take little, little bites of it and to try to push this down into that low end of the rim. One more time should do it. One more little 
bite. And then usually, there we go. And usually that last spot you can, all right, it kind of, kind of bent it up again. After I hammered it out, or if these pliers are strong enough to bend it back just to make it look better. Yeah, it'll be all right. All right, let's put some air to it. Make sure the tube isn't getting pinched in there. These angled ones, these inner tubes with 90 degrees on them are a little, sometimes, sometimes you can only use them on certain tires because the straight stems won't work. Make sure the tube isn't getting pinched in anywhere. Let's see, what do we got? Nine. Ten and a half. What does it tell us? Twenty psi max. And fourteen will be good enough. We don't have to go to the max. Some soapy water to see if we got any leaks. Usually around the valve stem with it if it's got a tube. A lot of times the tube will push out any kind of air that's in there. But I don't see nothing. A couple of bubbles coming out. Should be good. All right. There's your dinner. So now I just got to do the other one now. All right, let's put these bushings in. Now this one fits in there kind of loose, or does it? Nope, this one fits, yeah, a little loose. So I'm gonna take a center punch, cause I want this to be in there kind of tight. So that way when I'm drilling that hole in there, and if I take the wheel on and off, I don't wanna have to keep finding that hole every time. So I want it to fit in there a little more snug than that. So I'm going to take a center punch and I'm going to put some divots in there which will raise the metal and make it fit in there tighter. So let me get my spring loaded center punch. It's a nice center punch. If you've never seen one like this before. It's better than those ones you push on that click. Plus you can hit the top of this one too if you have to, with a hammer. My cousin Gerald Jack gave me this one. I used it so much that I actually stretched the spring out and I had to cut the spring down and shorten it. I'm sure the company that makes this probably sells you a replacement spring, but it seems to have a lot more, since I shortened it, it really puts a good divot in it now because it's got a lot more tension tension on it all right let's see how that did oh yeah see now I really got to tap it in there so now it's holding it in there nice and snug 
so I don't have to worry about that spinning on me. So now I need to know what size hole to drill. So I got my drill gauge and I got the pin that goes in there and that looks to be about quarter inch. And it is. But we'll probably go a little bit bigger because the hole's a little bit bigger. So we'll go 1764. So let me get a 1764 drill and a drill bit and we'll drill a hole in there. Alright, I decided to go with quarter inch instead because the 1764 was kind of opening the hole up a little bigger. So I just went with quarter inch. I could always wallow it out. Give it a little wallowing. Let's see how it fits. Oh yeah, it fits. Let me waller it a little more. I just hope it's gonna be long enough. Yeah, it's long enough to get that quick pin in there. If it wasn't, then I could have just used the bolt and the nut. Yeah, it fits. All right, good. Now these have got grease on them already. Alright, so I probably burred that up a little bit. Yeah, because it's not going on. So I'm going to have to get that burr off of there. So I'll just use a fly. Kind of raised it up when I drilled through it. Use a round file. But it's fitting tight on there. Now on yours, you may, on that axle, that axle rose, you may want to put some never seize on there, but this one's pretty lubricated up already. There it goes. That's what we want. Want to fit, like the Germans say, guten tight. Look at that. It's like it was factory. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. All right, I just got to do the other side now. Well, this one on the other side is uh, wanting to slide out on me. So I'm going to have to dip it up this side too. Get that bushing to fit in there tighter. Even though I had to tap it in with the hammer. Otherwise I'd have to drill a hole in the center of the uh, axle shaft and drill and tap it. Drill and, drill and tap the end of the shaft and then put a bolt and washer on there to kind of keep that bushing from coming out. So when I go to do the other wheel, I'll just have to divot, divot both ends up so it fits in there tighter. All right, I got the second one done. And this axle shaft seems to be a little bit raised from that pin. I'm going to have to file it down. Let me get a flat file for that. Alright, let's 
Let's see now. There it goes. Still going on tight. Oh yeah, it's raised up pretty good. Yeah, I can see a high spot right there. Oh yeah, you can see it. Now this other side had all them had some washers on there and this side they're missing. So let me find some washers to go on there. Yeah, I just noticed that. And also here's that model number of the snowblower. See how it starts with G-I-L? That's short for Gilson. Let me find some 5H shim washers to put in there. Take up that slack. All right, I found one. A thick shim washer that fit in there perfect. Gotta have a little, little play in there. So now we've converted it from these old hard tires to some air tires. Now I know they're, they're a little bit narrower, not much, kind of more rounded. So the next thing, let's fix that one skid shoe. Will this thing stay back on its own? Yeah. So let me spray some lubricant on there. I got some croil. Even though it says so that's WD-40 on there because I had WD-40 in there at one time, but then over here I wrote Croil. Let's see if it'll... Oh, yeah. And all rusted. Rusted on that, dude. Battery's going low. Good thing I got enough of these battery powered tools and batteries. Just like the band battery. There we go. But as I said before, you know, I could probably find some new ones, but let's just fix this one. Just in case, I might have a skid shoe that you can't get anymore. So I'll just weld this on there, but I gotta bend the ends up. So let me get a Sharpie. Or a paint pen. We got a paint pen here. And I'll mark it right about there and right about there 
because that's where I'm going to want to bend it up. We'll take it in the vise and bend it. Then I'll mark it and cut it off. Stick it in the vise on that line. Test fit it. Come on. Come on. There we are, dang near perfect. So let me mark it where I'm going to cut it off. Right here. And then I'll cut this off too, this old piece. And then I'll just weld it to it. Come on! Come on! What are you waiting for? So, remember I was saying that you could also put some kind of plastic under there to wear? So I got this stuff. This high density natural smooth plate. I forget where I got this from. Somebody gave it to me. But it's like a real hard plastic. So you can cut a strip of this. I'm not going to do it on this one. But I'm just saying you could. You could cut a strip of this. And you could drill it. And you could tap. You could tap this part. And you could cut a piece of this and screw it to the bottom of your skid shoe. Of course, you know, you would want to countersink it so the screws, the heads of the screws, would be countersunk into the plastic, but yet would be able to screw into the threads that you would put in this. And then you would have a little wear, a little, a little strip of that plastic that wouldn't scratch up your driveway. And then when it wears down, you can unscrew it. And, uh, and make another one. That's just an option. Or find those plastic skid shoes that have the same centers as yours and just replace it with them. But again, what if you got a piece of equipment where it's got some kind of odd size, like a Honda? I know Honda snowblowers, they have an odd uh, center on them. So I ended up having to do this to some Honda snow blowers, making a new skid shoe for it. Now I'm only going to do the one skid shoe, only because I don't have enough flat stock to do the other side. And we want to get this video done. that flat and then I'll just I'll just weld it in there pretty close to the color it was. It's not exact. So while we're waiting 
waiting for that skid shoe to dry, let's take a look at this here shave plate or scraper bar that it's got on here. And look at that, they're all, they're breaking loose. I sprayed some more of that coil on there. So this has got an adjustable shave plate on here. It's on slots, so you can adjust it. So I'm going to take it off, just to take a look at it. See if maybe we can flip it around. Or square it up. Come on. Gotta get that carriage bolt to lock in there. Put a little pressure on it. Because I'm sure this probably isn't available anymore. But you can make one. Just a piece of flat stack. So let's see. If I flip it around and it's all the way down in that slot, it seems to be in the same location. But you can see it's wore at a pretty good angle there. There's plenty of adjustment on it. Now if I had some two inch flat stock, I would have made one. I would have had to go and get some. And again, I want to get this video done. So I went up in the parts room and looked at the shave plates I had up there and I had one from Stens. It's for Aaron's. And there's the part number. It's a little thicker than this one, which is okay. The only hole that lines up is the one in the middle. But other than that, it's the same width. So I'll just drill new holes in it. So again, maybe you got one of these snow blowers and you're like, man, you're helping me out here, Terrell with all these part numbers. I can just order all that stuff. It's a little bit longer, but that ain't gonna matter. Oh. Keep listening there. There we go. All right. Drill some new holes in there. shave plate or scraper bar whatever you want to call it now I'll set that skid shoe shave plate down take it over here tighten up the skid shoe
And then the one on the other side, I got to adjust it down now. Because now it's sticking up. I want to do it by hand because I want to see if the bolts are going to break off or if they're going to loosen up. some more flex that next week. I'll take this one off and, and redo it. So there you have it. Now all we gotta do is take it out. Now we got a little bit of snow out there. We could try it in. We don't have a lot. I got a pile that I shoveled into a pile. So we'll take this pile and go blow that pile. Another thing I wanted to address is this thing. You ever see this thing in here? In these snow, older snow blowers would have that. And a lot of people are like, what's that for? What's that thing for? That's supposed to keep you from putting your hand in there even though I can get my hand in there. But that's what the purpose of that is. It's supposed to be a deterrent from putting your hand down in there. But trust me, if you want to stick your hand in there, you can stick your hand in there. And there's a lot of knuckleheads that do. Get this thing outside and blow some snow with it. Hey, Joe. Oh, hey, Slippers. Oh, look at this thing. Looks like it's all ready to go. Yeah, it's all ready to go. We're going to go out and blow some snow with it. Oh, nice. Hey, those tires, those look like those ones that I gave you. No, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't the ones you gave me. No, are you sure? Yeah, those I got off an old junk snowblower. I don't know, it looks just like them. No, here's the ones that you gave me, they're right here. Oh. Can't you tell, they got that sticker on them. Oh yeah, they had that sticker on there. Yeah, these are the ones you gave me. Oh, okay. Why, you want them back? Uh, I, no, I don't need them. All right. Well, if I decide to put them on something, then I'll give you some money for them. Oh, all right, great. All right, well, I'm gonna go out and blow some snow with this. All right, well, I was just on my way home, figure, stop in and see how you're doing. Okay. Stop for a walk. All right, go, go home. All right. Check it out in action. Well, you got an up, up close look at it. Oh, wow, really blows pretty good. Yeah. Oh, that's some cold powder, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I gotta get home and get some fresh clothes on. Yeah, don't go in the shop. I don't want you melting all over the place. Uh, give me a cold walk back. All right. All right. Bye, slippers. I don't know, those tires still look pretty familiar. They're not your tires. Okay, well, I'm just saying they look like them. tires 
on this from them hard rubber tires to some air tires, snow tires. We uh, fabricated a new skid shoe. We uh, made a scraper bar shave plate from something else fit on there. So, you know, there's ways to work around some of this stuff. It's got to be creative. The only drawback to this old snow blower is it's only got one speed forward. You know, not like some of the other big two stages where you can adjust the speed, especially when you got bigger, deeper snow. You know, sometimes you need to use a slower speed so the snow blower will, will go through it easier because if you're feeding it too fast, it's going to bog it down. But other than that, for its age, it's in great condition. The belts and everything seem to be fine. You know, I know we didn't address the belts or look at the belt because everything is working, the drive works. Seems like it had plenty of power for as old as it is. So the next thing I'll do is I'll change the oil because I'm going to sell it. I don't want this. I don't need it. So we'll change the oil and I'll, I'll upgrade that other skid shoe on the other side. That didn't take long to do. And then we'll, uh, we'll get rid of it. C'est la vie. Who's saying that? C'est la vie. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Remember them? C'est la vie. Which means goodbye. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you already haven't subscribed. You need to subscribe. Follow me with your antique snowblowers on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our web store. This is the newest edition. The Rat Fink Carol on the wheelie horse. And there's Fluffy. Fluffy the Rat. So check it out. Get yours today because you know this would look good on you, Grass Rat. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Wookie Wars! Working again! Brought it back to life. Polished another turd. Polished the stink right out of it.